Horse decides he wants to go home and has... Horse decides he wants to go home. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever today. We're going to talk about Prince Brat and the Whipping Boy or just the Whipping Boy. Prince Brat and the Whipping Boy is a 1994 Disney television release. It is directed by Sid McCartney, cinematography by Clive Tickner, editing by Sean Barton, music by Lee Holdridge, and is written by Albert Sidney Fleischman. Sid McCartney is best known for Love Divided, The Canterville Ghost, Yellow Thread Street, and The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. Clive Tickner is best known for Spice World, Traffic, Split Second, and The Borrowers. Sean Barton is best known for Return of the Jedi, Mutant Chronicles, Chaos, and Pig Hunt. Lee Holdridge, I covered in the video about young Harry Houdini. The link will be in the description. Albert Sidney Fleischman is best known for The Adventures of Bullwhip Griffin, Blood Alley, Spy in the Sky, and Goodbye My Lady. The film is based off a book called The Whipping Boy, released in 1986 by Sid Fleischman, the person who wrote the movie, just but under the name Sid Fleischman instead of Albert Sidney Fleischman. And I thought about not comparing them because the author wrote the screenplay, so then it's pretty much the same story. However, the book and the movie are pretty different actually, like the core of it's there, but the series of events is kind of different, so shall we compare? Prince Horse misbehaves frequently to get attention from his father and therefore is nicknamed Prince Brett. Seeing as he's a prince and he can't be beaten, they get him a whipping boy. Jemmy, the whipping boy, learns to read, write, and do math, but gets beaten several times a day because of Prince Horus. Prince Horus wants to run away and demands Jemmy come as his servant. The boys are kidnapped by two highwaymen who want to ransom the prince. Jemmy convinces the two men he's the prince. Prince Horus misunderstands Jemmy's intentions, betrays him, but they still escape. They meet Betsy, who's searching for her bear, and sends them to a nice potato man. They help Captain Nips get his wagon out of the mud, and he gives them a ride to the fair. The highwaymen find them and beat Horus, still believing Jemmy to be the prince. Petunia, the bear, scares the criminals away, and they all go to the fair. Horace and Jemmy go to catch rats and they overhear a conversation about how Horace will be a terrible king which hurts his feelings. They learn the king has posted a reward for Jemmy thinking he kidnapped Horace. The boys go into the sewers and trick the highwaymen into the most dangerous tunnel of rats. Horace decides he finally wants to go home and has Captain Nips return them so he can collect the reward for Jemmy. Horace explains the escapade to his dad and Jemmy is pardoned. The highwaymen escape the sewer but board a ship to Prison Island by mistake. Horace and Jemmy live happily ever after as best friends in the castle of the end. The film and the book are actually quite different, at least from the plot summary I read, because in the plot summary there is absolutely no mention of Annie Rose, which is Jemmy's sister. And the majority of the film, Jemmy is wanting to go save his sister from the jail she was put in, wrongly accused and sentenced. And there's no mention of her in the plot of the book, so I think Annie Rose was an addition, and she's funny and I like her. And then the, the king doesn't assume Jemmy kidnapped Taurus. He thinks the ambassador from another country that there was going to be like, they're doing new peace treaties with potentially kidnapped Taurus and he was gunning for war and it, it just, um, it's different. It's different. And I'm curious as to why it's that different when Sid Fleischman is the one who adapted it. The film stars Truman Monroe, Nick Knight, Kevin Conway, Vincent Chiavelli, Karen Salt, Andrew Bicknell, and George C. Scott. Truman Monroe plays Jemmy and is best known for Little Lord Flaunt Fauntleroy, The Fallen World, Infinite Justice, and An Organization of Dreams. Nick Knight plays Prince Horace and is best known for The Santa Claus, Jane Eyre, and this. Kevin Conway plays Hold Your Nose Billy and is best known for Gettysburg, 13 Days, Invincible, and Mercury Rising. Vincent Chiavelli plays Cutwater and is best known for Tomorrow Never Dies, Ghost, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and Death to Smoochie. Karen Salt plays Annie Rose and I covered her in the video about spies, the link will be in the description. Andrew Bicknell plays the King and he's best known for One of the Chambers, Set Fire to the Stars, Doom 3, and Victoria. George C. Scott plays Blind George and I covered him in the video about Rescuers Down Under the link will be in the description. As I said, the film's pretty different from the book. Also, in the United States, it was called Prince Brett and the Whipping Boy, and everywhere else it was called the Whipping Boy, just like the book. I don't know why they decided to call it Prince Brett and the Whipping Boy here. Maybe to be like, ooh, look, Prince Brett. I don't, I don't know, maybe because it's about both boys. I don't, I don't know. The film is so, so generic. It is like the most generic Father ignores his son, so son acts out to get attention, but then learns his lesson, and then father learns that he should pay more attention to his son because his son feels ignored. Like, it was the most generic version of that story possible. Almost, like, 
Jemmy was my favorite. I thought Prince Horace was bad. I also thought the kid was kind of a bad actor. He's very like plain and obvious. And Jemmy I thought was actually pretty good. And it just wasn't great. It was kind of sloppy. Their bonding scene was garbage. Like it was so abrupt and like Horace has been treating Jemmy like a piece of poo the entire film and then like out of nowhere they're bonding over catching fish and like I get it. Children can be like that sometimes but no. It wasn't fine for me and it's just it was so bland and it was so generic and the stakes weren't high like it was supposed to be like a really big deal that Prince Horace was being s spanked and whipped but like I didn't care. <laughs> I like I was like, okay, like, they have another kid who's perfectly well behaved whipped in place of him. Not, we shouldn't be whipping children in, at all. We shouldn't be whipping people at all. Uh, but, like, that's terrible. And then the prince is like, I want you to scream out. And Jemmy's like, um, no. So Jemmy is like, I just, it was super bland and generic, and I didn't care about literally anyone except maybe Jemmy and his sister and his whole sister's arc was weird it's just I liked that it ended nicely I liked that but otherwise this film was extremely underwhelming it was real I don't know what this was but I was gonna be like stink fest and then also like sleep fest I don't know what that was I'm so sorry also there were three parent deaths in this film which puts us over 100 parent deaths, which is super, super exciting. And I feel like we should have a little celebration for it, but I don't know what the little celebration should be. Should it be like a funeral <laughs> for all the dead parents so far? I don't know. But I'm um, just like a mini celebration because we've reached 100 parent deaths. Well, 101, but that's crazy. We've reached 101 parent deaths already. And that's just parent deaths that are seen or said on screen, remember how many are just never spoken about. We'd be way over a hundred by now. I can't believe that. It occurs to me that I just said it's super exciting that we've reached 101 parent deaths. <laughs> and um, that comes across like, yay, 101 parents have died. And um, obviously not how I meant it. Oh my God, not how I meant it. I meant it that it's exciting that like we've reached a hundred on any kind of count we've been keeping track of, not that I'm happy 101 parents have died. I also really wanted justice against that landlord that stole that money from Annie Rose and like wouldn't read her the letter, which ultimately ended up in her getting thrown in jail. So hated that and there was no justice against that landlord. Nothing ever came to her or happened to her and that was really annoying. Otherwise, that's everything I have. My final rating is three potatoes I don't know out of 10 our total movie count is our parent death toll is <laughs> our cry count is still the same if you want to keep up with that movie I'm watching when follow me on Instagram or Twitter you'll find out what movie I'm watching when I put it but it's every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday until next time comment like subscribe down to you are so you do and don't be I mean the highwaymen about it for sure the highwaymen <laughs> plumbers in my house working on toilets. All right.